Today we're going to be checking out the software for the Razer Black Widow V4 75% keyboard. With that being said, let's jump straight into it. So once you install the Razer Synapsys application, which is only available for Windows, this is going to be the screen you're greeted with. So a quick overview on everything. Uh, this at the top here is going to be your profiles. If you want to add a new profile, you can do that here. You can go ahead and have onboard memory profiles as well, which is basically your settings will be saved to your keyboard rather than to the computer itself. And then at the bottom here, you can also store macros and have them stored as well, not just the profile settings. And then there's gonna be more profiles. If you click the profile tab up here, you can link a game and the keyboard will change to that game. So if you go ahead and have this profile selected, your default one, you can go ahead and select a game. So I like to play Valheim a lot. And then I can make this profile activate whenever the Valheim game launches. Now moving back to the keyboard tab, we can see that we also have the keyboard image. And here you can click on any of the keys and assign different commands. So if I click this control at the bottom left, here's all of the settings that you can customize with it. So there's keyboard functions. So you can have alphabets, functions, number pads, navigations. And basically what these do is you can say like uh, alpha, alpha numeric. If I click the control button, the letter A gets typed in. And there's different modifiers you can have as well that allow you to use shift, control, or alt. And then you also have enable turbo. And this is gonna be cool because you can say, control can be pressed say 20 times and then once you press it, it's gonna go ahead and click the control button 20 times and then that's gonna trigger the letter A. That's gonna be a really useful shortcut if you have something you need to spam click and you can just press the button once and it shoots out like 20 times. Then next over here we have mouse functions and this is gonna be similar to the keyboard functions except you get mouse commands over here instead. And then enter device requires two Razer products to be connected and what that does is with these two products, you can have them work together to create a custom shortcut. So you can do something like shift plus right click and then that would do something specific that you can't normally do without two Razer products. Now switch profiles pretty straightforward. If you have two profiles you can just toggle between them or cycle through them and switch lighting is going to allow you to have different light profiles and you can switch between them and assign it to a specific key. Brightness this is how you adjust the keyboard brightness up or down. Hyper shift is basically you clone your keyboard and you have a whole another set of buttons and you can uh, use it as a shift modifier button. It's very cool and it's a little more in depth, but we won't be covering it too much in this video. But if you do want to see the hyper shift settings, you just push the standard button and now your keyboard is in hyper shift mode. Next, we have launch program and here you can launch a specific program on your computer. You just press the folder and navigate to the app you want to open and then launch website. You just type in the URL there and that's going to pop the website open in your browser. Multimedia is going to be similar to mouse functions and keyboards, except instead it's going to be your media controls that you can assign to any of these keyboard buttons. And then Windows shortcuts is going to be similar as well, except this is most of your Windows shortcuts like copy, paste, cut, open an app, open a calculator, refresh, etc, etc. Text function is going to be pretty straightforward. You can say hello everyone and then you put and press the save button. If I go ahead and press control, you can see it just spams hello everyone. That's going to be really useful if you have something you write out all the time. And then you can also add emojis here as well as a character map if you want like a very specific character. And then the last tab here is going to be disable, which basically disables the control key. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put it back on default. And then if we close this and scroll down here, here we can see we have some different modes. So game mode, basically, if you press always on the Windows key is going to always be disabled. And then you can also disable the alt plus tab or alt F4, which will definitely interrupt your game if you press that combo key. And then next we have the polling rate. And this is going to be how fast the signal gets sent to your computer. So by default, you're going to have a 1000, which is pretty fast and you can double it, you can go to 4000 or 8000. But you can see that we do get this warning that says it's going to consume more CPU power if you use it at 8000 could slow your performance down. So I would just try to use it at like 8,000. And if your computer is running slow, then I would recommend just turning it down a notch and keep turning it down a notch until it's working normally for you. Next, we have this lighting tab up here, and this is gonna allow you to control some of the light settings. So you have a bunch of different profiles here. So you can have like a breathing color where it breathes between green and blue. So if you look on my keyboard over here, you can see that it is green here. And then if you wait a second, 
it's gonna turn from green to blue. There's a bunch of different effects you can choose from. However, I personally like mine on static and I'm just gonna keep it the razor green color. And then we have brightness and this is basically how you adjust the brightness of the keyboard. This can be done in the software here or you can just go ahead and press function plus F11 to lower the brightness and then function F12 to raise the brightness. And then you also have switch lighting off if your display is turned off. And then you can make your lights auto shut down after some time goes by and you can set it to like five minutes or like 15 and 15 looks like it's the max that you can do. So as you can tell, this keyboard does have a lot of versatility to it and you can really customize this thing to do a lot of different things. If you wanna see a dedicated review video on the hardware with the Razer Black Widow V4 75% keyboard, be sure to click the video up here. And with that being said, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.